Build your own Mac OS apps in about three minutes. Let me show you how. Get the shortcuts app on your Mac. It's powerful. Welcome back to the channel. So today we have a fun one. I'm actually gonna show you how to build some really useful, and trust me, they're gonna be super useful little Mac OS apps using shortcuts that's built into Mac OS. It's a little application on here. You've probably seen that application before. You may have opened it up, dabbled with it, but you don't really understand it. I'm just gonna show you how to use, you know, you just create things in just a few minutes, first of all. I'm gonna show you maybe three or four different really quick apps. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit longer one just to show you what actually you can do with this thing. And it's just gonna be a quick overview so you start learning some of the basics. And, and like I said, but still, stay through the whole video because even if you just pick up just these little three or four apps I'm gonna show you, you're gonna use them probably every single day. They're that useful. So just sit back and relax, and we're gonna share my screen here, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. All right, here's my desktop right here. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Launchpad down here, and I'm gonna search for Other, the Other folder here. Click on that, and then there's gonna be a Shortcuts program right here. You can see there's the little symbol for it. I'm gonna click on that, and we're gonna launch Shortcuts, all right? Now what I wanna do is let me just go ahead and open this thing up. Let me click on this. We're gonna expand this just so it's a little bit easier to see here. Now yours could look totally different when you open it up. It just depends on where you were. So it could look like this, which is the gallery. So don't worry about it. It could also look like, you know, there's a whole bunch of different little icons in here you can click on. But let's just assume, the first thing we wanna do is click on all shortcuts right over here on the left-hand side. So we're on the same place. Now you may not have any of these shortcuts in here because I've created some in the past. So don't worry about that. Yours may be blank here. may only have a couple in here. What we're looking for is this little plus symbol right up here. See it here? And what the first thing you want to do is click on that little plus symbol right there, and we're going to launch this window. This is the window we want to get in. This is what actually is going to help us create these apps. So I'm, I'm just going to create a really quick one just to show you what I'm talking about. So let's assume that you want to start your day. Let's say I do video editing. So I do a whole bunch of other stuff, but let's say I'm ready for video editing right now, and I want to open up all my apps that are associated with video editing without having to open them up individually. Really quick, right, and really simple. So all we do is up in the search bar up here, first thing you want to do is just type in open. It's going to give you a whole bunch of different open stuff down here. See all these opens? And look for open app right there. I'm going to double click on it. So you double click on it, it adds it over here to the program field. Now it says open and then app right there. So you click on app and it's going to give you a list of all your apps in here, right? So the first thing I want to do is just type in, you know, I'm just going to assume iMovie. I don't really use iMovie, I use something else, but just for this example, I would use that for video editing. So then all I have to do is I can go over to open app, double click it again, it's going to create another one. I'm going to click on this and this time I'm going to type in Keynote because I use Keynote for a whole bunch of stuff when I'm doing video editing. So I'm going to double click that and I've added it there as well. And then the third app over here, I'm going to click open app just like that. And this time, let me just think about this for a second. What else do I use? Sometimes I use photos. So I'm going to find photos in here, double click on that. All right. So here's three apps that I want to open up basically right away when I start working on my video editing. And so I have this in here as a program. Now, before I do anything, I want to name it up here. See up here, it looks like a title bar, but you really want to click up there and I'm going to say open video editing apps, just like that. That's gonna be the title of what I wanna name it. I'm gonna click off of that, and then I'm just gonna close this down. Now watch what happens, I'm gonna close that down. Now, a couple things you can do here. Here's obviously, it created this little block here. Now if I double click the block, it's gonna bring me right back to the actual program, and I can, I can modify it. If I click this little play button, it's gonna play that, just exactly what I want it to do, but hold on before you do that. So I wanna show you one, one quick example. If you look at my menu bar, I don't have, I mean, I have a couple icons up here, but the one I'm looking for is not up here. So I'm gonna take this app I just created, I'm gonna drag it over to what it says menu bar. See right over here, it says menu bar on the left-hand side. I'm gonna let go. So obviously it didn't move it from all my, all my shortcuts, but down here, menu bar, it's got one now here. So I'm gonna click on this. If you've noticed, I just added it to the menu bar. What does that mean? I'm gonna click back on all of my shortcuts here. But if I go back up to the menu bar, since I added it up there, it adds this little icon up here. It looks like two pieces of paper. So now if I click on that, look at that. It has it listed right there. And this will always be up here now until I remove it from that menu bar. So you can see it. Now all I have to do is if I'm ready, I could, you know, if you can envision, let's say you wanna get ready for work, it can be all of your work applications. It could be anything. You know, you could have different, different things open for different reasons. You could have 10 different things in here for whenever you're ready to do music production or, or you know, your work you know, when you're working for your normal job. But here's video editing, so I'm gonna click on this. Now watch what happens, I'm gonna click on this, and instantly it says running. What's gonna happen in the background is opened up iMovie, it opened up Keynote, and it opened up Photos that quickly. So all these programs are now open. Here's Photos, I'm gonna go ahead and actually close that down, quit Photos. Here's Keynote, I'm gonna go ahead and quit Keynote here. And then here's obviously iMovie, and I'm gonna go ahead and just quit iMovie. So you can see it opened up that quickly, and that'll always be up there now. So whenever I'm ready to do my video editing, I click that, and it could be six or seven programs by following that same step. It'll open them all up instead of having to find them all and stuff like that. And then you're ready to work for, the, for that exact thing, right? It's all your applications are open. But let's keep moving. 
All right, let's assume though I also need some websites opened along with those apps because I actually, I do, let's say Storyblocks, that's a website that I use to get some kind of uh, B-roll and stuff like that that I pay for. It's just like, you know, pictures of people doing stuff and, and videos and stuff. So let's just go ahead and add that to our mix here. So I'm gonna go back into all shortcuts in here and shortcuts and I'm gonna, again, don't, don't click, don't, click the play button, but click in the middle of it, double click it right there. It's gonna open up that application again, right there. So we can modify it now, even though it's still got the same title. So over here, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna type in open again, just like that. But this time I'm gonna go down to open URLs. It's down at the bottom here, you can scroll down, but it's open URLs, gonna double click that. Now this is a little weird. So it says open, but it doesn't say URL here. It says app because we're, it's kind of recognizing what we did before it. So what I have to do here is I have to click on this right here, clear it, just right there, clear. And now it's gonna say open URL. So now what I can do is when it says URL, I can type in storyblocks.com, just like that, and then click off of it. So now what happens, and we're gonna go ahead and again, click off that and I'm gonna close this. It saved it into here. Obviously we added it to the menu bar. So now if I go back to the menu bar over here and I click this, now watch what happens. Click it, it's thinking about it. So it's gonna open up the iMovie again. It's gonna open up Keynote again. It's gonna open up Photos again. And now it opened up my browser. Take a look at that. And now on the browser here, it's opened up basically Storyblocks. So you can see now it's opened up the website as well. So you could do this with everything. You can open up all of your apps plus all your websites and, uh, and you're ready to go for whatever it is. If you're working or something and you have office, you know, a website that you have to log into for, for your work, you can get that open. You can get your email open. You can just program it so that everything opens at once and you're ready to go within one minute. Another quick example that I love using this for is let's say you want to open up various websites because let's say you're a big YouTube fan, tech YouTuber, right? You like tech YouTube channels. So let me just show you a quick example of this. So we're back in shortcuts over here. We're on all shortcuts. I'm going to click the plus here. This is going to create a new application. All right. So I'll put the title. I'm just going to put the title first. We're going to say open tech YouTube channels. That's what we're going to name this one. We're going to click off of it. Again, really quick, I'm going to go over here to the search bar. I'm going to click open. We're going to look for open URLs down here. And we open. And now this one, it says URL, so it's ready for a URL. I don't have to clear anything here. Now what I'm going to do is, here I am, and obviously in YouTube, this is Marquis Brownlee. Once I'm on his actual website here, or not his website, but his YouTube channel, I'm going to click at the menu bar up here to get this URL up here. I'm going to go ahead and control C, copy it. And we're going to move this down here. Now, right where it says URL, I'm gonna paste it right in there, and you can see that his channel's pasted in there. So we can go ahead and add another one. See the little plus symbol right here? So I'm gonna go ahead and click plus there. Now it's gonna say another URL, right? So this time, I'm gonna go ahead and search for another channel, Snazzy Labs, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and open up his channel, click on this, and here's this channel right here. So we're gonna go ahead and click this, and I'm gonna copy that, and then I'm gonna go back to URL and click that. And I'm gonna plus one more channel because we like, you know, we have a couple of YouTube channels we like. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and search for probably the best of them all. And I don't, you know, if you haven't checked this channel, you should really check this one out, all right? If you don't know what, you, what I'm talking about, then you probably don't even know who you're watching. But anyways, you go ahead and click on this up here. We're gonna copy this again. And I'm gonna add the URL here. So now you see that there's three URLs here to go ahead and open. So it says open YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click off this. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this, this little X here and close that down. It created another little application here, open YouTube channels. Remember, I'm gonna take this, drag it over to the menu bar so that it adds it to my menu bar. Now we got these two in here. So now what happens is if we close down, obviously Safari, let me actually close down Keynote that was open from before, so I just want to get that off there. So here's our little application here. And we're going to go back up here to this little icon, click on it. Now you see that it's right there, open YouTube channel. So, you know, obviously tech YouTube channels. So like, let's say you have um, news channels or whatever. I'll show you that in a second. But I mean, I'm just going to do this right now. Watch what happens. I'm going to click this. Now instantly it's going to open up all the different channels. Now the last one you put in there is going to open up kind of it's gonna show last, so it's gonna be me, but there's Snazzy Labs, and then there's Marquise Brownlee, so it's gonna open those up for you. And if you can imagine, um, I've done other ones like this, you know, obviously, let me just go in here for a second. Let me see if I can find it. There, I did a weather one in here, openweather.com. I mean, you can do a whole bunch of different ones in here. If you wanna search the weathers, you can actually bring up three or four different weather channels. You can do anything you want in there. So just think about the, the possibilities there as you're doing different things like news stations, let me see if I have a news one in here. Um, I think I have one right here, open news. I created this earlier. So if I double click on this, same thing, you can see Fox News, CNN, BBC. I just threw a whole bunch of ones in there. But again, if I was to go ahead and open this and move this over to the menu bar over here, 
Now, if we go over here to the menu bar and we click open news, what's gonna happen is it's gonna open up all three news stations right here, one, two, three, and they're just gonna open up for you. You're gonna get obviously this one, you're gonna get this one. You get the idea, so they're all just opening up there. And that's how this works really, really easy. All right, now that you learned those, I wanna show you another really quick one, and then we're gonna to get to that more complicated one. So hold on one second, just to get, just to kind of have you start learning this. Another one that I think is super useful here is if you go back in here, we were on all shortcuts, and we click on the little plus symbol, like I said, to create a brand new app. So here's the brand new app. I'm gonna go ahead and just have the title here. We're gonna type in quit all apps, all right? Now this one's useful for a couple of reasons. So if you go over here, you know, obviously there's a whole bunch of things you can do in here, but this time we're just gonna type in quit just like that, and we're gonna look for this one, quit app right there, see it right there? And we're gonna double click it. It's gonna create this little app over here. So now it's gonna say quit app choose, all right? What does this mean? First of all, you can choose the app you wanna quit, but we wanna quit all apps. So I'm gonna click on app right here. I'm gonna move this down to all apps right there and click on that, so quit all apps. Now, except, you could actually have a quit all apps except something, like if I'm, I'm actually doing a, a, a screen share, I could quit all the apps except for my screen share app, right? I could do stuff like that, but I wanna quit all of them, so I just leave it like this. And then I'm not gonna actually do this because it's gonna then stop everything that I'm showing you here. But once you close this down, now if I was to run this quit all apps here, and I you know I could drag it into the menu bar, but if I ran that, what would happen is, you know in Mac OS, like how you actually close out of apps, a lot of times they're still open on the bottom. They have the little symbols, like if you look down here, they have little, like little dots here, meaning that they're still running in the background. Well, if you use this app and you quit all apps, it'll remove all those and make sure they're absolutely quit. So like, let's say you wanna just quit everything off of everything, you know, everything that could potentially be open, you use that little app that I just showed you there, and you drag it up into that menu bar, and then anytime you wanna just kind of kill all apps, you go right up there, hit it, and it's all killed all the apps. So I think that's great just if you wanna like limit resource use and stuff like that. It's another one just really quickly to learn. All right, now that I show you some really easy ones, so if you go back in here, we're gonna show you a more complex one, and, and this is just to kind of get the, again, get the juices flowing and just to make sure that you guys understand how this can work and how you can expand this to just about anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in here, click the plus, so this means it's a brand new app, and this is gonna be the, uh, we'll call this the, the big one, all right? That's what we're gonna call it. So anyways, you get the idea. So first thing we wanna do is over here, I mean, there's tons of things you can choose in here, and you can kind of fool around with this, but I'm gonna type in ask, all right? It's gonna say ask for input right here. And uh, what, you know that's the first thing that we wanna do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click this. Now watch what happens. It says ask for text with prompt, all right? So that's the first thing we wanna put in here. And exactly what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask for some text with the prompt. And I'm gonna run this. If I run it right now, it's gonna go like this. It's gonna ask, look at that. You can see right here, it says what's the text. It's gonna ask me to put something in and click done. Now I can do that right now, but this is not gonna do anything because there's nothing else here, right? Obviously it's, that's, that's all it does right now. So we're gonna keep moving and show you what you can actually do here. All right, the next thing I'm going to do over here is we're going to type in set var, set variable right here. So you can see it. Search for that. And we're going to double click it here. So we're going to say set variable, and then it's going to say variable name right here. And we're going to call this test var. So test variable right there to ask for input. So basically what happens here is we basically are saying that ask for input is up here and we're gonna set the variable with whatever is put into this ask for input. Leave that alone. So whatever we put in here is gonna actually get filled into this test variable. So if I go like this, and I type in something here, whatever I type in there is gonna be in this variable called test variable. And you'll, this'll make more sense in a second, so hold on. Now one thing you can do here is, let me just show you. So. Now what we wanna do is we wanna say if, just like that, all right? We wanna put an if statement in here. And we're gonna go ahead and go like that, all right? So this is gonna say if test var, which is gonna be the input of this prompt, it's the name of the variable, so if test var is anything, all right? Well, we don't want it to be anything, because if anything, we, if we pipe in anything, it's gonna do something no matter what we put in there. We want it to be specific. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if it is, if so if I, someone types in, let's just say, actually, pages, just like that, so P-A-G-E-S, that's the name of a program, obviously. It doesn't really matter, though. I mean, I can put anything I want in here. So if that variable is pages, then it's going to have to do something. So what, what are we going to have it do? All right, you guessed it. So over here, I'm going to type in open again, and I'm going to select open app, just like that. And I'm going to say open right here, and I'm going to click on app. And then what we're going to do is we're going to search for pages, the actual app and we're gonna type that in. So now watch what happens. So ask for text, so whatever the prompt is, set the variable with the prompt, whatever you put in there. If it's pages, it's gonna open up pages, but it, otherwise, it's not gonna do anything. So watch what happens. So I click on this, I'm gonna type in test just like this. I'm gonna click done, I'm just testing it out. You can see nothing happened here, right? Not, it, didn't, it just ended, it gave me the test variable down here. But now, and I'll make, this will make more sense in a second, this is just running a test over here. So I'm gonna click this again, 
And this time I'm going to type in pages just like that. Now watch what happens. It should open the app now. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. And it's going to go ahead and we're going to give it a couple seconds. And look at that. It just opened up pages right there. See it? It's opening it up. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. So you can see that that's actually an if then statement right there. So why would this be important? Well, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this, right? And uh, let's say you want that prompt to come up. And let me just keep, just hold on one second. I'm going to show you a little bit more here. This will make a little bit more sense. All right, so ask for the text, set the variable. If it's basically says pages, we're gonna open up pages. If it's anything else, if I type anything else besides pages, it's gonna to go to otherwise right here. So we wanna click on here. Now the next thing we wanna do is, so if we wanna actually maybe search, maybe let's just search some search engines, all right? All right, next we're gonna type in search here. And don't worry about this, this will make more sense. And we're gonna go all the way down to where it says search web right there. See it right there? And we're gonna double click it. And you can see that it added that right where it says otherwise, it added it right below. Now, if, if this was added somewhere different, you can drag this, look at this. I can drag this wherever I want it to go, but I want it to be under otherwise right there. So now I want it to say search Google for test var. So what does this mean? It's gonna, so basically if I put in anything besides pages, it's gonna take that word it's going to go down to here otherwise, and then it's going to search Google for that word because test var is this basically variable, which is basically what I typed in up here. This is how I created this. So just for, you know, we'll, we'll do one more here. So search web, I'm going to click this again. It's going to add a second one in here. This time I'm going to click, instead of Google, I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in, let's just type in uh, DuckDuckGo, just like that. And now it's going to search the test of R as well. So, and then obviously, if I, you know, this is just how it ends right here. So let's just go ahead and we're going to shut this down. So what's going to happen basically, let me just shut this down. And uh, here's the big one. We just created this. I'm going to move this over to the menu bar. All right. And uh, we're going to go over here. So big ones right here. So if I click on this, now watch what happens. I'm going to click on this. It's going to give me my text prompt. It's probably hard to see. So there it is right there. All right. Remember, if I type in pages, it's going to open up pages. I don't want to do that. But if I type in anything else, anything at all. Let's just type in Boston Terrier, right? What's supposed to happen? Well, it's going to skip. And remember, it says it's going to skip. It's going to use that word, and it's going to search both Google and DuckDuckGo on the web. So let me go ahead and go in here. I'm going to click Done. Now watch what happens. Allow big one to perform a web search. It only, lets you, it only asks you that the first time. So I'm going to click Allow there. Now look at this. It's going to allow it. So the first time you do that, it's going to ask you, but then after that, it doesn't. But look what happened. It opened up right here, DuckDuckGo. It searched for Boston Terrier over here. Boston Terrier on Google, all right? So it did it perfectly. And again, if I go back in here and I click on this again and I click big one, I can search for any, any word in here, um, USA like that, click done. And it's gonna go ahead and open up two more websites, one from DuckDuckGo searching USA and then one from Google searching USA. But you can imagine, let me go back to this. I mean, this is just, just you know, this is obviously just one example I'm showing you here. There it is. So, I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and open the program back up. Obviously, I can keep otherwise. I can do a whole bunch of stuff in here. Or I could say, you know, obviously in here, if test var is pages, do this. If test var is something else, do that. So I could actually have it, you know, you could open up all your programs by name, or you could have it doing searches, or you can say otherwise, you could take that word and even do anything else with it. If you look down here, there's so many things you can do. You can add it to PDFs. You can format dates. You can, so you just got, this is how you do an if then statement in here. And I just wanted to show you like a basic, you know, how to do this. And hopefully it'll kind of give you some ideas. Again, this is, this last one's not that useful because, I mean, it might be because you might want to search, you know, I could go in here and let's say we remove this pages here, but I could go in and, you know, add all the search engines here so that if I type in any word up here to that prompt, I'm going to click on here to big one. If I type anything in this prompt that I just created, it'll maybe search six or seven different search engines and give you the results. So you don't have to go through each one and actually search them individually if you just like that kind of stuff. So these are the things you got to think about. Really interesting stuff. But this is just a quick example to show you how to use it. Now you got to think of the ways to actually get in there and start using it. Okay, so I hope this helped a little bit and not confused you. I'll probably do some more on this with some more useful long programs in the future. But I just wanted to get, you know, like I said, just get you kind of thinking about how to use it. And that last one is to do that exactly, even though, you know, you can copy that, but then you can just start fooling with it. Remember, if you put things in the wrong places, you can drag them or drag and drop them into the right places. Click on things to see what they're asking you. You just got to get in there and just fool around with stuff. Just make sure, obviously, you know, I guess it's a possibility. Don't, if you start getting into the ones that you can delete files and stuff, then you got to be a little more careful. 
people, but most of the, you know, most of all, it's pretty safe overall. So get in there and start fooling around with it. It's the only way you can learn stuff like this. Um, but the first ones I showed you with all the websites opening, all the programs opening, all, all that kind of stuff is super useful. And you can do that super safe in a matter of minutes. We'll talk to you in the next one. Like I said, put in the comments if you want to see more of a continuation of this. I'll put some really more useful, longer apps in there that you can do some really cool stuff with. And I'll show you exactly how to do those as well. So you let me know. We'll talk to you in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.